Hello and welcome to the electrostatic field plotting experiment. In this experiment you're going to be looking at equipotential voltage lines around two electrodes. These electrodes are going to be arranged with different geometries. So for example you'll use two rectangular plates, you'll use two circles inside each other, so concentric circles, and then two circles next to each other like this. Now the idea of this experiment is that you're going to be comparing the theoretical values of how the voltage and the distance vary with the experimental values that you're going to measure in the laboratory. So we're going to need to start by calculating the theoretical voltages, how they change with distance from these plates. So in order to do that, you're going to need to use the equation that the voltage difference, delta V, is equal to minus the integral of E dot dr, where E here is the electric field and dr is the distance from the plates. So we could do this integral from A to B, and this is plate A, this is plate B, here like that. Now in order to do that, we're going to need to know what the electric field is. Probably the easiest way to calculate the electric field for these cases is to use Gauss's law. Gauss's law tells us that the integral over a closed surface is equal to the charge enclosed within a surface divided by epsilon naught. So for this setup here, you're going to need to choose an appropriate Gaussian surface to integrate over. Here's a bit of a hint. A prism like this one works well. Once you've calculated the electric field with Gauss's law, you're going to be able to substitute it into this equation so that you can get an expression for how the voltage changes with distance. So once you've done that, you're actually lucky, it's been done for you in worked examples one and two. For these other two configurations, you're going to have to show how to do it for this first configuration. You can then plot a graph showing the voltage with the distance. And what you can do is substitute in your values for the different distances. You're told the distance between the two plates if this one here is at zero millimetres, then this side of this plate here is at 60 millimetres. Those values are all in your lab manual. And so you can plug these different distances into the equation that you've derived for the voltage difference and plot a graph, which may look something like that. When you get to the lab, you're then going to physically measure what the voltage at each of these distances is, and you will plot that on the same axes so that you can compare your theoretical and experimental results. So you are given the general expressions for these two configurations. You're going to need to substitute in the actual distances which you are told in your lab manual into the general equation that has been derived in the worked examples so that you can do the same similar graphs for these two configurations as well. So V versus R and V versus R. Now, if you want to come to the lab really well prepared, after doing the pre-lab quiz, you can work through the theoretical problems and you can plot the theoretical graphs and then once you get to the lab all you're going to need to do is take the actual physical measurements of these things. So for the experimental setup we have an electrostatic paper showing two parallel electrodes and then we're going to put a potential difference across that and that's by connecting a 12 volt DC power supply as follows. Turning the dial to so it shows 12 volts. And now we're ready to start measuring.
Now, to measure the potential difference between the two electrodes, we're going to be using a multimeter and a probe. So, first connect the probe to the common port of the multimeter, as so, and then connect the circuit to the rightmost port, and that has volts underneath, like so. Then, with the dial on the multimeter, switch to the voltage reading of 20 volts. And now we are ready to measure the potential difference. So, in order to test the probe, let's first put the probe at the source, and that should be reading 0 volts. And then to measure across the circuit, it should be measuring about 12 volts. Now, putting the probe in between the electrodes, you should get a value that's in between. Like so. A few tips on making precise measurement with the probe. So first, place the probe onto the electrostatic paper as so. Try not to piece the paper. Keep it vertical and try not to move the probe because moving the probe gives various measurements of the potential difference. Okay, so now let's start by finding some equal potential lines. So, for example, let's find the 6 volt line. So I'm going to place the probe onto the electrostatic paper and try and define where 6 volts is approximately. Now that's approximately 6 volts. So at that point, we have to mark on the paper the, uh, the 6 volt point. As so. Then we find another point where it's 6 volts appears on the multimeter and that's approximately 6 volts as well so we draw another and then what you do is then find series of these points where 6 volts appears on the multimeter and then it's a simple case of connecting the dots So we just finished the contour map for two parallel electrodes. Now, you're going to repeat the experiments for two further configurations. A cylindrical capacitor, where the two line, and for two conductor capacitors. So now that you've made all your measurements, you can go back to the theoretical graphs that you've plotted, and on the same set of axes, you're going to be plotting your experimental results. So possibly your experimental results will look something like this. So plot them on the same set of axes, and then you're going to need to compare these experimental results with the theoretical ones.